Good morning. Good morning. Hi, baby. I didn't get a chance to say hi to you this morning. Yeah. yeah. I love her. She's she she completes me. I ask this morning that all of us would prepare our hearts. This um sermon this morning, I can guarantee I will not get through it without emotion. Um, I'll probably break down a couple of times. It's one of those things that you've been a Christian for a long time and yet you realize something and it seems like you continue to forget the simplest things. And I know today at, at 3 o'clock there's going to be a meeting and, and there's going to be a lot of hearts involved and Man, may we, may we never say that we are defined by any title or any name, but only by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Regardless of what the culture or the city decides to call us or what we think we are, may we say we are just children of God that need Jesus. I have been suffering from a condition called um, Christmas blues. <laughs> and it's really weird because what happens during the Christmas season is that the kids get out of school and they come home. And at home, there's this wonderful involvement with the children and we do great things. And it's Christmas season and we're watching Christmas movies and and then your children get on your nerves and you ground them and then you unground them because it's Christmas season. And, and then, you know, you want to beat them, but your wife talks you out of it. <laughs> all these different things. And then all of a sudden Christmas takes place and, and you have those moments where it's just you and Jesus and you're thankful for your family and, and everything around you. And then pretty soon school starts back up. And man, it's that day on this last Thursday that my kids go to school and I am at home alone. Thank you. Let's try that again. I'm at home alone. <laughs> and it's really weird because when they were with me, I was like, when is school starting? But then when they were gone, I realized, man, I miss my kids. And so I'm, I'm calling my wife, are you done working? You want to come home early? <laughs> and she always calls when I get this way. She goes, man, you're clingy. <laughs> she gets home and she's tired and I embrace her and hold on. I love you so much. <laughs> she's like, man, you're clingy. But I do, I just like the presence of them being around because whenever my kids are around, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're right there in front of me all the time. As a matter of fact, if they have their way, they're outside playing with the kids down the street. However, it's just their presence. I just know they're here and I know they're coming home and, and they call me and say, Daddy, we're going to go over to so-and-so's house. And I say, you got it. Call me if you need me. And, and it's just the presence of that. And man, the Lord really started showing me something this week that just literally crushed me in a good way. Sometimes we take for granted, like I do the presence of my kids, we take for granted the presence of Jesus. And sometimes we just forget what that really means and what comes with the presence of Jesus. Now, I know in this room there are many people that have been in places where Jesus was not present. Can I get an amen? amen. So you think. So I think as if there's a time when I would never want to be around my kids. There is never a time that Jesus does not want to be in your presence. <laughs> no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, believe it or not, you can take this as a blessing or a curse. Jesus was there. <laughs> You mean he saw all that? Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> really thought I slipped that in under the radar. Today we're going to go through a story in Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. We've been through this story before, but there's just this wonderful, beautiful example of the presence of Jesus. 
Now let me set this up as you're turning your Bibles there. Luke chapter 24, 13 through 35. Jesus has already been crucified. His followers have watched Him die on the cross. They have watched the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Romans all celebrate because this man who claimed to be the Christ is really nothing but a human being who died on a tree. And it's the third day. And what happens, there's two gentlemen, and they're on their way to a place called Emmaus. Back to their comfort zone, back to their home. They've been with Jesus, they've experienced Jesus, then they watch Jesus die, and, and they're on their way back to Emmaus, and something amazing happens. Verse 13, Luke 24 says, Now that someday two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. I want to stop right there. Man, seven mile walk. Praise God. <laughs> Boy, they sure could use some Nikes back then. Amen. <laughs> they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talk and discuss these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. They were sad. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Verse 21 again. We had hoped that he was the one. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? In the beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them that was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Everybody say amen. 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 And then he disappeared from their sight. <laughs> Dang it. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned once to Jerusalem. That's another seven miles. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus recognized, was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Have you ever known somebody in your life that just the presence of them made you feel good? Oh, yeah. We get to experience this whenever we get visitation from my cousins. When I was young, they lived in Alaska and we lived in Texas and rarely were we able to see each other. But when they came in, they stayed for two weeks and everything was just awesome and wonderful until the day they had to leave. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, we would go see them off at the airport, and it was back before 9-11, so you actually got to go into the airport and hug them right before they entered into the plane. And I remember being so downcast and sad because my aunt and my uncle and my cousins, who we had just had a blast with, were leaving. And I'd look at my mom, and she would cry, and I'd say, man, mom, what's wrong? She goes, I'm 
just going to miss my sister. And then we drive home back to our house, and you walk into the house, and you're kind of like, this is not fun. And mom immediately says, give me all your laundry, or I'm going to beat you with the coat hanger. And we say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, I'll leave the coat hanger part out. She never said that. But she's and there came this depression because their presence is gone. Everybody in this room, whether you know it or not, has felt the presence of Jesus. It goes beyond an emotional experience. It goes to a part to where your spirit latches on to Christ because they knew each other before you were ever created. No wonder we see these moments when you're maybe having a bad day and you see somebody in a public place that's reading the Bible and you ask them if you can talk to them and you spill your guts to them. And then you say, I have no idea why I just did that. <laughs> it's not because you're in the presence of somebody, but you are in the presence of Jesus. These guys experienced that. They had walked with Jesus. They had seen him. And when Jesus would speak, it would melt their hearts. And they would understand these things and realize that they were in the presence of somebody amazing. And then they watched him die. Now, here's what's so unique. They're on their way back to Emmaus. And Jesus just starts walking with them. But they don't recognize him. And I wondered that. How come they didn't recognize him? Follow me here, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus... Bore all of our sins. Give me an amen. amen. On that cross, he carried all of our evil and our darkness. And ladies and gentlemen, some of you in this room know how evil a man's heart can be. And he dies for this and he takes all that sin on. And during the three days, he goes to a place that I promise you say you've been there and back, but you have not experienced it like Jesus. However, when he walked into this place, every knee bowed and every tongue confessed. That's Jesus. We're in the presence of Jesus and there's no more games, man. I'm hitting my knees. Because just by being in the presence of Jesus, I've got to shut my mouth. Amen. And he took the keys now. And he said simply, I'll be back. Yeah, he was the first one to say it, not all. <laughs> they say, you know, he appears and he's walking with these guys. They can't recognize him. Do you not understand, ladies and gentlemen, that this man that was walking with these two men to Emmaus was an embodiment of perfection. He was no longer lacking anything in his body. Know this. As soon as we are born, our flesh begins to die. But when you are in the presence of God, there is no death around him. You cannot exist around God and die. And here Jesus is walking and they don't recognize him. He looks totally different. He looks complete. He has all these wonderful things. He's, he's not on the cross bearing all this disease and sickness. He's walking. He might even be whistling. He might be skipping. I don't know. But he begins to ask them, why are you guys so sad? And they're like, who are you? And have you missed the whole thing? Jesus of Nazareth was crucified three days ago. And we were hoping that he was the one. And this man walking with them says, man, why are you guys still having a hard time believing? <coughs> Notice when they got to Emmaus, Jesus was going to keep walking. And they said, hey. <coughs> Would you please stay with us? Sir, I know this is going to sound really weird, but when I'm around you, I'm reminded of being around the guy that died on the cross. And if you would just please just stay with us, man, that would really mean a lot to us. They didn't recognize him here. They knew him here. And when he broke the bread... Their eyes were open, and they were in that joy. Oh, you guys know that joy when everything is made complete, every question is answered, and you know it's there, and they want to jump on the screen. It's you! And all of a sudden, he disappears. I guess he didn't want to pick up the tap. <laughs> Notice their response. 
I got to tell somebody. I got to get up. I got to get out of here, man. We got to go back to Jerusalem. We got to tell everybody. We got to tell so and so. We got to tell so and so. We got to, I mean, this is amazing. This is, this is it. And, man, and notice what they said. Were our hearts not burning when he was speaking the scriptures to us, man? Was it not the same thing, even though he looked different, man? It was him. And, man, we're so excited. Now you see these guys who were walking to Emmaus with their faces downcast, sprinting to Jerusalem with their heads up going, Amen. Something amazing has happened. Let me just kind of give you my imagination. My opinion, not thus saith the Lord, but I just know as Jesus was walking with them on the road, maybe they didn't recognize this, but as they were walking on the road, if there was a tree that was withered, as soon as Jesus passed by, the tree went and bloomed. There's no death in Jesus. And as they were walking, the grass that was with that water began to turn green and beautiful. And the flowers began to bloom. And as Jesus would walk, they'd follow him. But they were so downcast, maybe they didn't see that in the presence of Jesus, many things begin to happen. There's so many benefits that they're uncountable, but I'm going to give you four that I know can help us right now today where we are. Whenever we're in the presence of Jesus, we get secure. There is security that goes well beyond this reality. Many of you in this room have told me on many accounts that I was all alone and everyone had forgotten me. Everybody in this room has felt isolated and alone. <clears throat> However, the truth is your eyes were not able to see that God was there. If Jesus was there and you're in the presence of him and if you just open your eyes and see him there, you have no idea that you'd begin to be healed. If that is not the case, then answer me some of your testimonies when you said, in my worst addiction, as soon as I took that last bump, this wisdom came to me. I've got to change. He loves me. I am no longer subject to this addiction. And you began to walk. You found people that were around you that can help you defeat a disease. And you're here today. Where on earth did we as a Christian culture get so screwed up that we said the only place you can find the presence of Jesus is at church? I believe he's here. Can I get an amen? amen. But he never forgets his kids. <laughs> Ever. <clears throat> Number two, healing. And this is the one that breaks me. There is so much sickness in this world today, man. And it's all here because of us. Amen. Because of our sin. You can sit there and say, oh, we have these diseases that there's no cure for. Oh, this God-forsaken country, this God-forsaken world, when the truth is it was never his intent, his intent for any of that to exist. But in our sin, we birthed these things. Can I get an amen? amen. This world needs one thing. And it's the presence of Jesus. Even if he doesn't say a word, just him being in our presence, things around us and within us begin to heal. You can't help it. And you know what I'm talking about. Because many of those moments in your life, when you were at your bottom and you finally found a Bible or something, you opened it up and you didn't know what to say. You don't know how to pray. You don't even know if God exists, but there's this peace. And you begin to breathe. You begin to believe, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. That is you being in the very presence of Jesus. Number three, encouragement. Somewhere along the line, we thought that whenever we're messed up and God shows up, he's showing up with a paddle. Maybe that was your experience of your family, that whenever you messed up, you got to beat him. And I'm not talking about the discipline beatings. I'm talking about, I am so mad at you, I can't stand you, I hope this kills you beatings. And some of you know what I'm talking about. 
And we associate that God is that way. That's why we think in our sickness he would never want us. And hopefully God doesn't see what I'm doing wrong because if he really saw what I was doing wrong, he'd kill me right where I stand. Can I get an amen? amen. In the presence of Jesus, in your brokenness, he has three words for you. I love you. Amen. Oh, God, but I'm sick and disgusting. Shh. I love you. Oh, but you don't know what I've done and who I've done it to, and I'll never be a success in society. I'm a failure. You don't want to have anything to do with me. Shh. I died to get rid of all that junk. I love you. Stand. We're encouraged. And from that we get confidence. Confidence to change who we are. Confidence to be somebody we never thought we could be. And what is so beautiful about that is many of you in this sanctuary are not the same person you were 10 years ago. Can I get an amen? amen. And it's not because you came to this church. I would really hope somebody would object to that. At that I guess. <laughs> just, just confirming. <laughs> it's the fact that you are in the presence of Jesus and in presence of the people who have Jesus within them. Amen. Here's a calling that we have. May his presence forever be evident in this place. Right. Just his presence. Man, I do not want a structured, category, uh, categorized way to, to, to change your life. And if you'd follow my steps and read the books that I write and, and print them out, man, you can change your life. And I'm here to tell you this right now. And I don't mean to step on anybody's toes. But I'm here to tell you, if Jesus is not involved in the changing of your life, you will not change. Amen. Amen. I know that by experience. Amen. And I grew up in the church. <laughs> There's that moment in my life, and this is why it's so tender to me. When I thought I had it all figured out, I was raised in a loving and Christian home. Give me an amen. amen. I went to the most magnificent church in the world of Texas. It wasn't this one. <laughs> I knew what to say. I knew God and blah, blah, blah. And I had all the right words to say. As a matter of fact, if you were, did not know or, or accept Jesus, then you and me didn't have anything to talk about because you were going to hell and I'm going to heaven. Can I get an Amen. amen. And then one day, Jesus grabbed me and said, I love you. I know you do. What's not to love? <laughs> I know we're laughing, but there's a part of me that said, I know you love me because of who I am for you. That's right. And then Jesus said, give me a minute. And he grabbed a mirror. And he said, look deep. And as I looked... I found out that I was a horrible example of Jesus Christ. And he was not about debates. He was about love. And I began to break. And as I broke, he continued to say, I love you. I love you. I love you. And it was hard for me to accept that I had absolutely been get thee behind me, Satan, to Jesus. And the whole time he kept saying, Travis, I love you. I love you. Now you walk with me. You walk with me and I'm going to show you things and I'm going to change you. And just by hanging out with me, you're going to become somebody different. Man, and I started going, Lord, I will be different for you. And Jesus said, stop. You can't do it without me. Amen. Oh, but Lord, if I can do this, I'll impress you and then you'll really love me. He says, Travis, I can love you no more than I already do. And no less. Travis, there's nothing on this universe that can keep me from, your, from loving you. I just want you to love me. 
But God, I don't even know how to do that. Just hang out with me, Travis, and you'll change. That's what's so amazing. And what's so unique is this past six months, Pastor Allen and I have been going through this transformation. That it's not about setting up these, these uh, structures that are in order for you to follow like a maze so eventually you get the cheese. I like cheese. <laughs> but it is about simply this. May his presence be here. Because I don't care what you're going through, what you've done. When you get into the presence of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you can't help but get lined up and being healed. Amen. If you think you don't have direction right now in your life and you're spinning upside down, stop and say, Lord, please come to me and be still and know that he is God. Amen. Amen. That's what's so amazing about our culture. Man, we get caught off surprises all the time. Man, if our stock market crashes, oh, we're, in well, many of you aren't, but. <laughs> oh, if we lose this and all our money, well, many of us won't, will we? Because we just don't have a lot to lose. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, but Travis, if Congress passes that bill, it'll kill us all. It's not a surprise to your God. We're in the year 2012. The last year of existence. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm going to max out every credit card I have in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know why that's a bad idea? Somehow the bill collectors will survive to 2013. <laughs> Somehow. That's a big debate right now. It especially goes in the Christian culture. Is it the end of the world? Is it? I don't know. And right now, I just don't care. Because with my God, if I'm on this planet, then I'm going to be about my father's business. And man, if all of a sudden he comes back and I missed it, wow, that'll be awesome. There I am at United shopping for groceries. <laughs> Pushing a cart, next thing you know, Jesus is in the hallway, in the in the aisle, going, "You ready? Really? It's time." Come <laughs> on. Man. Oh, but what about this? What about that? What about all the things that you've built and worked on? Nothing that I have ever done is anything close to being in the presence. Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if we can agree and understand that we may his presence forever be evident in this place, then we must also agree to the calling that we are to take the Jesus within us to others so that they too can experience his presence. Amen. This is what I get excited about. Many of you in this room do not know how to talk. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Many of you in this room don't even know how to pray. And then we ask God, Lord, teach me to pray or I sound really cool. <laughs> Here's how some of you that ride motorcycles pray. God, you're as beautiful as a fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and God says oh, that moves my heart <laughs> some of you ladies man I love your prayers too Jesus you're like a walk through those pedals <laughs> some of you have been locked up before I love your prayers cause you don't even start praying to Jesus you go right to Satan <laughs> Satan, I'm going to punch you in the forehead. <laughs> Man, Jesus. Man, you start praying like that, I'll be right behind you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and there's those of us who are holy. And we pray in the King James Version. <laughs> Thou art the Lord is thy God. And I'm here to tell you this right now. If you got words and no heart, just keep them to yourself. But you can pray with your heart and not say a single word. Amen. 
Look how amazing this is. If you believe in Jesus, Scripture tells us that He is in you and you are in Him and you are one. That means wherever you go, that presence of Jesus is. No wonder wherever you walk, people might be drawn to you because Scripture says that Jesus says, I'll bring all people unto me. And we sit there and go, oh, but Lord, I don't even know what to say. And do I need to, to, to ask them to say this or pray this or pray that? You know what? God has prepared a time for you to be about his business. And it'll be in his power, not yours. So just chill out and enjoy it. How about it? I'll never forget that I have a sister-in-law who's been through it. And she kind of holds herself as... Like us, kind of, man, I really was screwed up, but by his grace, man, I'm healed and I'm better, but I really am just this failure. And, and she comes and visits, and, and she goes back home, and we experience that, man, I miss her, and, and she's really wonderful. And, and my wife begins to tell me that she had explained to Tabitha that there was a moment when she was back at home that she thinks the Lord has used her. And Tabitha said, well, tell me about it. She said, well, there I am talking to this lady in church, and I never even knew her before, and we were just meeting, and I was getting to know her, and I was putting on my, my best smile, and uh, blah, 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 and, and she asked if we could have some coffee, and I said, well, sure, we can have some coffee, what day, and she said, well, how about this day at this time, and she says, well, I can't do that, because um, I, I help out at, at this place where there's, there's girls that are planning on having an abortion, and I just love on them, and, and and those who are planning to have abortion, maybe some of those who have had an abortion and are hurting, they come in and we just love on them. And the lady broke <laughs> to the point she said, did I just defend this lady? And she tells this lady, I am so sorry if I said something wrong. And she says, I have been dying inside because I have aborted a child. And my sister-in-law said, can I take you to get some coffee? <laughs> And she didn't do anything except just hear her. And, and as my wife is sharing this with me, I am falling apart. Because my sister-in-law advanced the kingdom of God that day. The world may not see her as somebody special or anything like that. She may never get an award and be paraded through the streets. But I will tell you this. They will know her name in the heavens. She is about her father's business. She has no degree in this. No training whatsoever. But there's one thing that she had. The presence of Jesus. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, not only may this be a place where Jesus is evident, but may we be a people that wherever we walk, Jesus walks with us. Amen. Do you realize that is absolutely the diminishing key to hell's plans. That godly people just go out and exist in the world. That you just go out and love well. Now many of us in this room that are here, may I thank you for being here this morning. And here's why. Not necessarily because it's really nice to see you, which it is, but because you bring with you the presence of Jesus. And when we all get together, there's all these presences of Jesus. And then Jesus is here. Next thing you know, we're in this presence of Jesus. An idiot gets up and talks, and for some reason, the Holy Spirit makes sense. <laughs> we call that church. I'm here to tell you, you don't call it anything, ladies and gentlemen, for you are the church. Amen. Amen. Whether it's in this building or not. But man, let me explain this to you. If you have the presence of Jesus and we are all together, then may Jesus Christ somehow, some way, through the power of the Holy Spirit, send us the most wretched person in this city. <coughs> have them walk through that door, sit down, and watch them be changed by the presence of Jesus. That's right. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. That's what I pray for this place. Whatever we're going to call it. That we can say, whoever is out there that is hurting and lost, come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Oh, but they're out there and they're not coming. Fine, we'll go get them. 
Jesus knew what he was doing when he redeemed those people. Give me an amen. Amen. I am in the presence of the most beautiful people on the planet. Look how beautiful this, look to the left and to the right of you. Some of you are saying, is it true that those before us are considered beautiful? Hot. <laughs> Not because your outward appearance, but because who is within you. <laughs> and when you are somebody who has Christ's presence within you, and he goes wherever you go, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you become one of the most dangerous people on this planet. May it be said of this place, not look how big they're getting, not look at the quality of people there, amen? Amen. <laughs> But if you go there, you will find the presence of Jesus. That's right. Amen. 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 Let's stand together. Grab the hand of the person next to you, please. Father, we come to you this morning. And Jesus, I thank you for your presence. Jesus, I thank you so much that you are not a God that is unreachable, but that you are a God that meets us right where we are and you love us. Father, I pray for everyone in this sanctuary that no matter where we go, may we be in your presence. Father, if there's anything in our lives that we have done that has separated us from your presence, May we quickly put it on the altar, confess our sin, so that we may be forgiven and once again, right in the midst of your presence. Mm -hmm. Father, I don't know what you are doing with this place, but I do know that it is the best for all of us. So I say this with the most deep sincerity. Jesus, do all you have in mind with this people. For we are with you, heart and soul. It's in your name we pray, everyone said. Amen. Amen. Go and be the presence of Jesus.